Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wiki Whisperer, Articles Aloud. My name is Adrian Curro, and I will be your host. Now this is a show where I select a Wikipedia article at random, or by request, and I read it in its entirety. Now to keep with the spirit of authenticity, as if I was truly reading to you, I have decided to do this show in one take, no cuts, no edits. That means all stutters, misspoken words, and errors will be kept in, which I apologize for in advance. Today's article is about the Reunion Ibis. Let's begin. The Reunion Ibis, or Reunion Sacred Ibis, scientific name Threskiornis solitarius, is an extinct species of ibis that was endemic to the volcanic island of Reunion in the Indian Ocean. The first subfossil remains were found in 1974, and the ibis was first scientifically described in 1987. Its closest relatives are the Malagasy sacred ibis, the African sacred ibis, and the straw-necked ibis. Travelers' accounts from the 17th and 18th centuries described a white bird on Reunion that flew with difficulty and preferred solitude, which was subsequently referred to as the Reunion Solitaire. In the mid-19th century, the old travelers' accounts were incorrectly assumed to refer to white relatives of the dodo, due to one account specifically mentioning dodos on the island, and because 17th century paintings of white dodos had recently surfaced. However, no fossils referable to dodo-like birds were ever found on Reunion, and it was later questioned whether the paintings had anything to do with the island. Other identities were suggested as well, based only on speculations. In the late 20th century, the discovery of ibis subfossils led to the idea that the old accounts actually referred to an ibis species instead. The idea that the solitaire and the subfossil ibis are identical was met with limited dissent, but is now widely accepted. Combined, the old descriptions and subfossils show that the reunion ibis was mainly white, with this color merging into yellow and gray. The wingtips and plumes of ostrich-like feathers on its rear were black. The neck and legs were long, and the beak was relatively straight and short for an ibis. It was more robust in build than its extent relatives, but was otherwise quite similar to them. It would have been no longer than 65 centimeters, 25 inches, in length. Subfossil wing bones indicate it had reduced flight capabilities, a feature perhaps linked to seasonal fattening. The diet of the Reunion ibis was worms and other items foraged from the soil. In the 17th century, it lived in mountainous areas, but it may have been confined to these remote heights by heavy hunting by humans and predation by introduced animals in more accessible areas of the island. Visitors to Reunion praised its flavor and therefore sought after its flesh. These factors are believed to have driven the Reunion ibis to extinction by the early 18th century. Taxonomy The taxonomic history of the Reunion ibis is convoluted and complex. Due to the ambiguous and meager evidence that was available to scientists until the late 20th century. The supposed white dodo of Reunion is now believed to have been an erroneous conjecture based on the few contemporary reports which described the Reunion ibis combined with paintings of white dodos from Mauritius by the Dutch painters Pieter Wiethuis and Pieter Holstein II and derivatives from the 17th century that surfaced in the 19th century. The English chief officer John Tatton was the first to mention a specifically white bird on Reunion 
in 1625. The French occupied the island from 1646 and onwards, and referred to this bird as the Salutaire. M. Carré of the French East India Company described the Salutaire in 1699, explaining the reason for its name. Quote, I saw a kind of bird in this place which I have not found elsewhere. It is that which the inhabitants call the Oiseau Solitaire, for to be sure, it loves solitude and only frequents the most secluded places. One never sees two or more together, it is always alone. It is not unlike a turkey, if it did not have longer legs. The beauty of its plumage is a delight to see. It is of changeable color, which verges upon yellow. The flesh is exquisite. It forms one of the best dishes in this country, and might form a dainty at our tables. We wished to keep two of these birds to send to France, and present them to his majesty. But as soon as they were on board ship, they died of melancholy, having refused to eat or drink. End quote. The marooned French, Hunot Francois Legault, used the name Solitaire for the Rodriguez Solitaire, a raffine bird related to the dodo he encountered on the nearby island of Rodriguez in the 1690s. But it is thought he borrowed the name from a 1689 tract by Marquis Henry Duquesne, which mentioned the reunion species. Duquesne himself had probably based his own description on an earlier one. No specimens of the Salitaire were ever preserved. The two individuals Carré attempted to send to the loyal menagerie in France did not survive in captivity. Billiard claimed that the French administrator, Bertrand Francois Marais de la Bourdonnais, sent a Salitaire to France from Reunion around 1740. Since the Reunion Ibis is believed to have gone extinct by this date, the bird may actually have been a Rodriguez solitaire. The only contemporary writer who referred specifically to dodos inhabiting Reunion was the Dutch sailor, Willem Jesperantsen Bontico, though he did not mention their coloration. Quote, there were also Dodersen, which is Old Dutch for dodos, which have small wings, and so far from being able to fly, they were so fat that they could scarcely walk, and when they tried to run, they dragged their underside along the ground." End quote. When his journal was published in 1646, it was accompanied by an engraving, which is now known to have been copied after one of the dodos in the Flemish painter Roland Savary's Crocker Art Gallery sketch. Since Bontico was shipwrecked, and lost all his belongings after visiting Reunion in 1619, he may not have written his account until he returned to Holland seven years later, which would put its reliability in question. He may have concluded in hindsight that it was a dodo, finding what he saw similar to accounts of that bird. Early Interpretation In the 1770s, the French naturalist Comte de Buffon stated that the dodo inhabited both Mauritius and Reunion for unclear reasons. He also combined accounts about the Rodriguez solitaire and a bird from Mauritius, Osio de Nazareth, now thought to be a dodo, as well as the solitaire Carré reported from Reunion under one solitaire section, indicating he believed there was both a dodo and solitaire on Reunion. The English naturalist Hugh Edwin Strickland discussed the old descriptions of the solitaire in his 1848 book, The Dodo and Its Kindred, and concluded it was distinct from the dodo and Rodriguez solitaire due to its coloration. The Belgian scientist Edmond de Silles Longchamps coined the scientific name Apterornis solitarius or the solitaire in 1848, apparently making it the type species of the genus, in which he also included two other masquerade birds, 
only known from contemporary accounts, the Red Tail and the River Union Swamp Hen. As the name Apterornis had already been used for a different bird by the English biologist Richard Owen, and the other former names were likewise invalid, Bonaparte coined the new binomial Ornithaptera borbonica in 1854. Bourbon was the original French name for Réunion. In 1854, the German ornithologist Hermann Schlegel replaced the solitaire in the same genus as the dodo and named it Didus abterornis. He restored it strictly according to contemporary accounts, which resulted in an ibis or stork-like bird instead of a dodo. In 1856, William Cocker announced the discovery of a 17th century Persian painting of a white dodo among waterfowl, which he had been shown in England. The artist was later identified as Pieter Wythus, and many prominent 19th century naturalists subsequently assumed the image depicted the white solitaire of Réunion, a possibility originally proposed by ornithologist John Gould. Simultaneously, several similar paintings of white dodos by Pieter Holstein II were discovered in the Netherlands. Other paintings and drawings were also later identified as showing white dodos. In 1869, the English ornithologist Alfred Newton argued that the Wethus's painting and engraving in Bontico's memoir depicted a living reunion dodo that had been brought to Holland, while explaining its blunt beak as a result of beak trimming to prevent it from injuring humans. He also brushed aside the inconsistencies between the illustrations and descriptions, especially the long, thin beak implied by one contemporary account. Newton's words particularly cemented the validity of this connection among contemporary peers, and several of them expanded on his views. The Dutch zoologist Anthony Cornelis Odemans suggested in 1917 that the discrepancies between the paintings and the old descriptions were due to the painting showing a female and that the species was, therefore, sexually dimorphic. The British zoologist Walter Rothschild claimed in 1907 that the yellow wings might have been due to albinism in this particular specimen, since the old descriptions described these as black. By the early 20th century, Many other paintings and even physical remains were claimed to be of white dodos, amidst much speculation. Rothschild commissioned British artist Frederick William Frohawk to restore the solitaire as both a white dodo, based on the Withus painting, and as a distinct bird based on the French traveler Slier Dubois' 1674 description for his 1907 book, Extinct Birds. In 1937, the Japanese writer Masauji Hachisuka suggested that the old accounts and paintings represented two different species, and referred to the white dodos of the paintings as Victorornis Imperialis, honoring King Victor Emmanuel III of Italy, and the solitaire on the accounts of Ornithaptera solitaris, using the generic name coined by Bonaparte. Hachisuka also suggested that a 1618 Italian illustration previously identified as a dodo being hunted actually showed a male, brown, reunion solitaire. He ruled out Rodriguez because that island was not yet inhabited at the time. To him, this cleared up the confusion between the two species, which is why he named the white dodo for the king of Italy, the illustration being from Italy. Today, the illustration is thought to depict an ostrich or a bustard. Modern Interpretation Until the late 1980s, belief in the existence of a white dodo on Réunion was the orthodox view, and only a few researchers 
doubted the connection between the Salatara counts and the Dodo paintings. The American ornithologist James Greenway cautioned in 1958 that no conclusions could be made without solid evidence such as fossils, and that nothing indicated that the white dodos in the paintings had anything to do with reunion. In 1970, the American ornithologist Robert W. Storer predicted that if any such remains were found, they would not belong to Raffiné like the dodo and the Rodriguez solitaire, or even the pigeon family like them. The first subfossil bird remains on Reunion, the lower part of a tarsometatarsus, was found in 1974 and considered a new species of stork in the genus Ciconia by the British ornithologist Graham S. Cowles in 1987. The remains were found in a cave which indicated it had been brought there and eaten by early settlers. It was speculated that the remains could have belonged to a large, mysterious bird described by Legat and called Legault's Giant by some ornithologists. Legault's Giant is now thought to be based on a locally extinct population of greater flamingos. Also in 1987, a subfossil fossil of an ibis found in a cave was described as Borbonibus latipus. The specific name means wide foot by the French paleontologists Cécile Morer Chavir and François Moltou, and thought related to the bald ibises of the genus Gerontichus. In 1994, Cowles concluded that the stork remains he had reported belonged to Bourbon ibis, since their tarsal metatarsi were similar. The 1987 discovery led the English biologist Anthony S. Check to suggest to one of the describers of Borbonibus that the subfossils may have been of the Salatère. In 1995, the French ecologist Jean-Michel Probes reported his discovery of a bird mandible during an excavation on Réunion the former year, and suggested it may have belonged to the Ibis or the Salatère. In 1995, the describers of Borbonibus latipus suggested that it represented the Reunion solitaire and reassigned it to the ibis genus Rescuornis, now combined with the specific name Solitaris from de Selles Longchamps 1848 binomial for the solitaire, making Borbonus latipus a junior synonym. The authors pointed out that the contemporary descriptions matched the appearance and behavior of an ibis more than a member of the raffinae, especially due to its comparatively short and straight mandible, and because ibis remains were abundant in some localities. It would be strange if contemporary writers never mentioned such a relatively common bird, whereas they mentioned most other species subsequently known from fossils. The possible origin of the 17th century white dodo paintings was examined by the Spanish biologist Arturo Valedor de Lozoya in 2003, and independently by experts of Mascarene Fauna, Czech, and Julian Hume in 2004. The Withus and Holstein paintings are clearly derived from each other, and Withus likely copied his dodo one of Hallstein's works, since these were probably produced at an earlier date. All the later white dodo pictures are thought to be based on these paintings. According to the aforementioned writers, it appears these pictures were themselves derived from a whitish dodo in a previously unreported painting called Landscape with Orpheus and the Animals, produced by Roland Savry circa 1611. The dodo was apparently based on a stuffed specimen that in Prague, a Walgvogel, Old Dutch for dodo, described as having a dirty off-white coloring, was mentioned in an inventory of specimens 
of the Prague collection of the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II, to whom Savary was contracted at the time, 1607 to 1611. Savary's several later dodo images all show grayish birds, possibly because he had by then seen a normal specimen. Cheke and Hume concluded the painted specimen was white due to albinism, and that this peculiar feature was the reason it was collected from Mauritius and brought to Europe. Bellador de Lozoya instead suggested that the light plumage was a juvenile trait, a result of bleaching of old taxidermy specimens, or simply due to artistic license. In 2018, the British ornithologist Doyleon C. Parrish and Cheke suggested that the painting was instead executed after 1614, or even after 1626, based on some of the motifs. While many sub-fossil elements from throughout the skeleton have been assigned to the Reunion Ibis, no remains of dodo-like birds have ever been found on Reunion. A few later sources have taken issue with the proposed Ibis identity of the Solitaire, and have even regarded the white dodo as a valid species. The British writer Errol Fuller agrees that the 17th century paintings do not depict Reunion birds, but has questioned whether the Ibis subfossils are necessarily connected to the Solitaire accounts. He notes that no evidence indicates the extinct ibis survived until the time Europeans reached Reunion. Cheke and Hume have dismissed such sentiments as being mere belief and hope in the existence of a dodo on the island. Evolution The volcanic island of Reunion is only 3 million years old, whereas Mauritius and Rodriguez, which each of their flightless raffine species, are 8 to 10 million years old, and according to Czech and Hume, it is unlikely that either bird would have been capable of flying after 5 or more million years of adapting to the islands. Therefore, it is unlikely that Reunion could have been colonized by flightless birds from these islands, and only flighted species on the island have relatives there. 3 million years is enough time for flightless and weak flying abilities to have evolved in bird species on Reunion itself, but Moer, Chavry, and colleagues pointed out that such species would have been wiped out by the eruption of the volcano Piton de Neiges between 300,000 and 180,000 years ago. Most recent species would therefore likely be descendants of animals which had recolonized the island from Africa or Madagascar after this event, which is not enough time for a bird to become flightless. In 1995, a morphological study by Morel Xavier and colleagues suggested the closest extent relatives of the Reunion Ibis are the African sacred Ibis, T. Ethiopicus of Africa, and the straw-necked Ibis, T. spinacollis of Australia. Cheke and Hume instead suggested that it was closest to the Malagasy sacred ibis, T. bernieri, and therefore of ultimately African origin. Description Contemporary accounts describe the species as having white and gray plumage, merging into yellow, black wingtips and tail feathers, a long neck and legs, and limited flight capabilities. Dubois' 1674 account is the most detailed contemporary description of the bird, here as translated by Strickland in 1848. Quote, Solitaris. These birds are so called because they always go alone. They are the size of a large goose and are white, with the tips of the wing and tail black. The tail feathers resemble those of an ostrich. The neck is long and the beak is like that of a woodcock, but larger. The legs and feet like those of turkeys. This bird has recourse to running, as it flies, but very little." End quote. According to Morer Xavier and colleagues, 
the plumage coloration mentioned is similar to that of the related African sacred ibis and straw-necked ibis, which are also mainly white and glossy black. In the reproductive season, the ornamental feathers on the back and wingtips of the African sacred ibis look similar to the feathers of an ostrich, which echoes Dubois' description. Likewise, a subfossil lower jaw found in 1994 showed that the bill of the reunion ibis was relatively short and straight for an ibis, which corresponds with Dubois' woodcock comparison. Cheke and Hume have suggested that the French word vichas, from Dubois' original description, usually translated to woodcock, but could also mean oyster catcher, another bird with a long, straight, but slightly more robust bill. They have also pointed out that the last sentence is mistranslated and actually means the bird could be caught by running after it. The bright coloration of the plumage mentioned by some authors may refer to iridescence, as seen in the straw-necked ibis. Subfossils of the reunion ibis show that it was more robust, likely much heavier, and had a larger head than the African sacred and straw-necked ibises. It was nonetheless similar to them in most features. According to Hume, it would have been no longer than 65 centimeters, or 25 inches, in length, the size of the African sacred ibis. Rough protuberances on the wing bones of that reunion ibis are similar to those of birds that use their wings in combat. It was perhaps flightless, but this has not left significant osteological traces. No complete skeletons have been collected, but of the known pectoral elements, only one feature indicates reduction in flight capability. The coracoid is elongated, and the radius and ulna are robust, as in flighted birds, but a particular foramen, or opening, between a metacarpal and the allular is otherwise only known from flightless birds, such as some ratites, penguins, and several extinct species. Behavior and Ecology As contemporary accounts are inconsistent on whether the solitaire was flightless or had some flight capability, Maurer Xavier and colleagues suggested that this was dependent on seasonal fat cycles, meaning that individuals fattened themselves during cool seasons but were slim during hot seasons. Perhaps it could not fly when it was fat, but could when it was not. However, Dubois specifically stated the solitaires did not have fat cycles, unlike most other reunion birds. The only mention of its diet and exact habitat is the account of the French cartographer Jean of Fouilly from 1708, which is also the last record of a living individual. Quote, the solitaires are the size of an average turkey cock, gray and white in color. They inhabit the tops of mountains. Their food is only worms and filth taken on or in the soil. End quote. The diet and mode of foraging described by Foley matches that of an ibis, whereas members of the Raffinae are known to have been fruit eaters. The species was termed a land bird by Dubois, so it did not live in typical ibis habitats, such as wetlands. This is similar to the reunion swamp hen, which lived in forest rather than swamps, which is otherwise typical swamp hen habitat. Sheke and Hume proposed that the ancestors of these birds colonized Grey Union before swamps had developed, and had therefore become adapted to the available habitats. They were perhaps prevented from colonizing Mauritius as well, due to the presence of red rails there, which may have occupied a similar niche. The Reunion Ibis appears to have lived in high altitudes, and perhaps had a limited distribution. Accounts by early visitors indicate the species was found near their landing sites, but they were found only in remote places by 1667. 
the bird may have survived in eastern lowlands until the 1670s. Though many late 17th century accounts state the bird was good food, Fiuli stated it tasted bad. This may be because it changed its diet when it moved to more rugged, higher terrain to escape pigs that destroyed its nests. Since it had limited flight capabilities, it probably nested on the ground. Many other endemic species of Reunion became extinct after the human colonization and the resulting disruption of the island's ecosystem. The Reunion ibis lived alongside other recently extinct birds such as the Hupo starling, the Mascarene parrot, the Reunion parakeet, the Reunion swamp hen, the Reunion scops owl, the Reunion night heron, and the Reunion pink pigeon. Extinct reptiles include the Reunion giant tortoise and an undescribed Leolopisma skink, the small Mauritian flying fox, and the snail Tropendophora. Coronata lived on Reunion and Mauritius, but vanished from both islands. Extinction As Reunion was populated by settlers, the Reunion ibis appears to have become confined to the tops of mountains. Introduced predators such as cats and rats took a toll. Overhunting also contributed, in several contemporary accounts state the bird was widely hunted for food. In 1625, John Tatton described the tameness of the bird and how easy it was to hunt, as well as the large quantity consumed. Quote, there is store of landfowl, both small and great, plenty of doves, great pirates, and such like, and a great fowl of the big knees of a turkey, very fat and so short-winged, that they cannot fly, being white, and in a manner tame, and so be all other fowls, as having not been troubled, nor feared with shot. Our men did beat them down with sticks and stones. Ten men may take fowl enough to serve forty men a day." End quote. In 1671, Millet mentioned the culinary quality of this species and described the slaughter of several types of birds on the island. Quote, Another sort of bird called solitaires, which are very good to eat, and the beauty of their plumage is most fascinating for the diversity of bright colors that shine on their wing and around their necks. There are birds in such great confusion and so tame that it is not necessary to go hunting with firearms. They can so easily be killed with a little stick or rod. During the five or six days that we were allowed to go into the woods, so many were killed that our general, De La Haye, was constrained to forbid anyone going beyond a hundred paces from the camp, for fear the whole quarter would be destroyed. For one needed only to catch one bird alive and make it cry out, to have in a moment whole flocks coming to perch on people, so that often without moving from one spot, and could kill hundreds. But, seeing that it would have been impossible to wipe out such a huge quantity, permission was again given to kill, which gave great joy to everyone because very good fare was had at no expense. End quote. The last definite account of the solitaire of Reunion was Fuelis from 1708, indicating that the species probably became extinct sometime early in the century. In the 1820s, the French navigator Louis de Freycinet asked an old slave about Drontes, old Dutch word for dodo, and was told the bird existed around St. Joseph when his father was an infant. This would perhaps be a century earlier, but the accounts may be unreliable. Cheke and Hume suspect that feral cats initially hunted wildlife in the lowlands and later turned to higher inland areas, which were probably the last stronghold of the Reunion ibis, as they were unreachable by pigs. The species is thought to have been driven to extinction around 1710 to 1715. 
And with that, we conclude this week's Wiki Whisperer Articles Aloud reading on the Reunion Ibis. Thank you all once again for tuning in with me this week, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any suggestions on how I could improve my podcast, if you would like to submit an article request for me to read next week, or if you would simply like to give me some words of encouragement, please feel free to do so by emailing me at wikiwhisperer at gmail.com. That is spelled W-I-K-I-W-H-I-S-P-E-R-E-R at gmail.com. All of the information used on this podcast can be found on wikipedia.org and is available for fair use under the Creative Commons license. And once again, thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next week. Have a wonderful rest of your day.